Hi, let's talk about Avogadro's hypothesis. hypothesis. This really opens up a lot of doors for us. So here is his hypothesis. Great work from Avogadro. Equal volumes of gases, and notice I underlined that word gases. This applies to gases, not liquids or solids. But equal volumes of gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. So you have to have constant temperature and pressure have equal number, numbers of particles. And so I put in parentheses, the particles that you and I use the most is going to be moles. So here it is. If we have a constant pressure and temperature, there's a direct relationship between the volume of the gases and the moles of the gas. And I wrote that right here, that moles are proportional to volume if pressure and temperature are constant. So you get this direct relationship. If you increase the number of moles, you have to increase the volume. If you decrease the number of moles, you're going to decrease the volume of that gas. Now what's interesting about this is this right here hypothesis applies to any gas, any gas. So there are really three important outflows of this. The first one is the ideal gas law, and there are videos just on that. So if you have questions on the ideal gas law, go to those videos. Um, the second really important outflow application is this fact right here. At STP, and you'll recall STP is 1 atm and 0 degrees C. Watch that video if you have a question. So at standard temperature and pressure, we're holding that temperature and pressure constant at standard conditions, one mole of any gas. So it can be carbon dioxide, that's a molecule. It could be neon, um, a noble gas. It could be chlorine, a diatomic gas. One mole of any gas has a volume of 22.4 liters, 22.4 liters. That right there is a ratio, which means that we could use it with dimensional analysis. I have an example right here. So let's pretend that we have uh, 3.2 moles of neon. Now here's the important thing. It has to be at STP. I'm at a temperature of zero degrees C and a pressure of one atm. So I'm at STP and I have 3.2 moles of neon. And the question is, what's the volume? How many liters do we have of neon? Well, I can use this ratio right here. Now I wanna pause, I have a big warning. Students like this ratio, okay? And they will try and use that ratio all over the place inside of a gas unit. But you can only use it if it is at STP. So using this, Always ask yourself one question before you write it down. You say, is this at STP? If it's not, you can't use this. If you're at STP, fabulous. Enjoy the easy process. But be careful, know that students use it more often inappropriately than in the correct situation because it has to be at STP. All right, I want to get to liters. So we are going to cancel moles. That goes in the denominator, so it cancels put liters in the numerator. And then I just attach my ratio here. One mole of any gas, in this situation it's neon, will have a volume of 22.4 liters at STP. So notice moles will cancel, and all I have to do is 3.2 times 22.4, and we are going to get 71 point, let me see, 71.68. 71.68. Um, I have two six six here. Let's round to two six six. So 72 of my unit is liters. If I have 3.2 moles of any gas, but right now I'm talking about neon, um, at STP, it is going to take up, a, take up a volume of 72 liters. Okay, so that was the second really big application. Third application, and this is pretty neat. Third application is that when we look at a chemical equation, the molar ratios of the gases can be used as volume ratios. So here I have my um, very quintessential water uh, equation. And notice I have gases. This will only work with the gas phases. Okay, only works with the gases. Um, so this is how I'd read it. Two moles of hydrogen gas react with one mole of oxygen gas to produce two moles of, of water gas. Now on this, I don't have to be at STP, but I do have to have constant temperature and pressure. 
So let's put this down. We do have to have a constant temperature and pressure. Doesn't have to be a STP. You only have to have STP when we're attaching this very specific number of the 22.4. Here, however, remember, it goes back to Avogadro's hypothesis. There's a direct relationship between moles and volume when you have constant temperature and pressure. So as long as you have gas phases and constant temperature and pressure, let me show you. If I'm looking at this molar ratio, two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen. Well, I can change that word mole to liter because the same uh, proportionality is going to apply for volume as it is for moles. So I could say two liters of hydrogen react with two liters of oxygen. So here's your big takeaway. In the specific situation that you have gas phases with a constant temperature and pressure, you can actually use molar ratios as volume ratios. So let me give you an application of this. Let's say that I have um, 5.4 liters of oxygen, okay? 5.4 liters of oxygen. And I'm wondering how many liters of hydrogen do I need to completely react with that oxygen? Okay, well, I want to get rid of the liters of oxygen and end with the liters of the hydrogen. I can just attach the molar ratios because their gases is at constant temperature and pressure. They're also volume ratios. Um, so we've got one liter of oxygen reacts with two liters of hydrogen. So liters of oxygen cancels uh, 5.4 times two divided by one, and that would give me 10.8 liters of hydrogen are required. Are required. So three really big applications that we use um, often from Avogadro's uh, hypothesis. Number one, ideal gas law. Go watch those videos. Number two, at STP, any gas, one mole of that gas equals, takes up a volume of 22.4 liters. And then lastly, when you have gas phases at constant temperature and pressure, you can use the molar ratios as volume ratios and do stoichiometry with volume. Pretty cool. All right, your next step from here, you're ready. Ideal gas law. Have a good day. Thanks so much.